The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Marshall. There is tragedy in being deceived, in having hopes dashed, in admitting failure in the human relationship. But at least the blame can be shared. It was partly his fault or her fault, not entirely yours. The greater misfortune is in deceiving oneself, to catch at straws, to take shadow for substance. It is this enigma of self-delusion that Henry James explores in the tale about to unfold. I can't stand the man, Arthur. What can you do about it, Oliver? She married him. I'd like to show him up for what he is and make her realize it. And if you don't convince her, I might kill him. Oliver, remember, you're here to paint my father's portrait, not for revenge or murder. <laughs> mystery drama, The Liar, a story by Henry James, was adapted especially for the Mystery Theater by James Agate Jr. and stars Norman Rose. I shall return shortly with Act One. say that Oliver Lyon ranked with Gainsborough, Sergeant, or Turner, but in his day, he was certainly London's most popular and highly paid portrait artist, and young, and a bachelor. His studio was in St. John's Wood. He accepted what commissions he cared to. He had a secretary who took care of the day-to-day chores, and on the day our story begins, he was trying to paint from memory a girl he had seen on a park bench in the English Garden in Munich. Bates, will you answer that? Bates? Uh, be, be right there, Mr. Lyons. Bates, what is keeping you? Uh, just doing the accounts, sir. Uh, Mr. Oliver Lyons, residence. May I speak with Mr. Lyons, please? All oh, right. I, I don't know whether I can disturb him. Uh, who shall I say is calling? Bates. This is Bates, isn't it? Yes, sir. No, sir. It's Arthur Ashmore. Oh, uh, uh, just a moment, sir. Uh, uh, Mr. Arthur Ashmore for you, Mr. Lyons. Uh, thank you, Bates. Uh, yes, Arthur. I hope I'm not calling at a bad time. You are, rather. I've just given the portrait one brown eye and one blue eye. No, I'm joking. What's on your mind? The old man finally said yes. He did? So when are you free? Well, I could start next week. Next week it is, then. I tell you, he's going to be delighted. I'd be glad to get out of London myself for a bit anyway. I may invite a few friends over for the first weekend. People who appreciate art. Arthur, old friend, don't overdo it. Just remember, I'm coming out to do a portrait of your father. Goodbye. Bates, I'm going to Hertfordshire to the Ashmores. Oh, very good, sir. And Bates, forgive me for barking at you just now. Uh, After all, you are really the only faithful friend I have. (laughs) Thank you, sir. Father apologizes for not joining us at dinner on your first night here, Oliver. But when you're 90, you spare yourself as much as you can. Besides, he hates dinner parties. Oh, do you know any of the people at this table? I don't think so. Ah, at the far end, that's the Murchisons. He's with M15. Uh, across from us, that florid gent with the beautiful blonde mustache. He looks like a buccaneer. You would romanticize him, being a painter. No, honestly, doesn't he? Can't you just see him in a doublet and hose, swinging a cutlass? <laughs> As a matter of fact, he is a bit of an adventurer. Or so he would have you believe. Uh, who's an adventurer? You are, you are. Oliver was just saying, you give the appearance of a buccaneer. <laughs> oh, I, I did introduce you, Colonel, to Oliver Lyon. 
Colonel Capitos. Oliver's come to do father's portrait. Oh, that reminds me. I picked up a new miniature at Christopher's. I must show it you. If you'd excuse me for a moment, I'll fetch it. I'll be right back. He'll return without it, you'll see. He'll say, uh, he must have left it at home. <laughs> now, who else don't you know? Uh, that girl there, I'm quite sure that I know her. Uh, which one? That strikingly beautiful one, next to the M15 chap. Uh, she's wearing a wedding band. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> of course you notice her. Who is she married to? Is he here tonight? You've just been talking to him. You mean the buccaneer? Indeed. They've been married nine years. That's the colonel's lady. I see. Is he very wealthy? No. But he'd like you to think so. He'd like you to think a lot of things about him that may or may not be true. May or may not? May not. Arthur, if that's what you think of him, I can't understand why he's a weekend guest. Oh, I can put up with him. Most people do. His father was a great friend of my father's. They were in India together. So you knew Eve, did you? Oh, yes, in Germany. I was a struggling art student, and she was altogether the most delightful thing in Munich. All the artists were in love with her. She told me she must marry well to help her family. She told you? Yes. I proposed to her. Oh. <laughs> and I've known Clement Cappadoce for years. What a coincidence. So... He made off with the love of your life, did he? Yes. Yeah. I, uh, I never got over her. It may be why I never married. Ah, now that dinner is over and the ladies have left, Arthur, do you mind if I join you and Mr. Lyon at your side of the table? Not at all, Colonel. Uh, uh, <coughs> Well, I expect to see old Harris here this evening. We're going hunting tomorrow. Oh, I think that's off. He was thrown from his horse the other day. Fell on his head. Uh, when I was in Ireland, I got pitched out of a dog cart and landed smack on my head. Did you? Yes, they thought I was dead. Carried me to the nearest cabin, and for days I lay there with the pigs, unconscious. Uh, it was a near thing. They didn't put me underground. I, I think I've heard this adventure before. So if you and Oliver will excuse me, I will go upstairs and say good night to my father. Uh, tell Sir David I look forward to our first session. I shall. Good night. As I was saying, I, I, I was then taken to an inn completely insensible. I lay there for three months. Not a glimmer of consciousness. And then one day I opened my eyes... <laughs> Fit as a flea. Fantastic. Well, the experience did me good. Rested my brain. I must tell you about India sometime. My father was there with Sir David, you know. No, I've never been there. Ah, but you've been to Munich, and I haven't. I've often heard of you. My wife used to know you. I'm glad she remembers me. I recognized her at dinner, but I was afraid she didn't. Well, I dare say it was about that picture, and she was ashamed. You painted her portrait. Yes, many times. She may have been ashamed of what I made of her. Oh, not at all. Uh, the one you, you gave her as a kind of uh, bacante with vine leaves in her hair. <laughs> it made me fall in love with her. It was the first decent portrait I had done. I'd be curious to see it today. Oh, don't ask her to show it to you. She'll be mortified. I don't understand. Well, uh, an old friend of my wife's from Munich, the Grand Duke of Silberstadt, spotted the picture at our house in Bombay. You know, he's one of the greatest collectors in Europe. He's made such a fuss over it, and, well, it happened to be his birthday, and Eve gave it to him to be rid of him. Of course, he was enchanted. But we miss the picture. Well, if it's in a great collection, a work of my incompetent youth, I'm infinitely honored. Uh, he's got it in one of his castles. I don't know which. He's got so many of them, you know. He sent us to return the compliment a magnificent old Indian vase. If you come to see us in town, she'll show it to you. Ah, I see her standing by the drawing room door. Go speak to her. She'll be delighted. Good evening, Eve. Oliver. Oh, 
I'm so glad to see you. I was delighted when Arthur told me you would be here. I tried to get a smile from you at dinner, but I couldn't. Well, for a moment, I wasn't sure you were looking at me. Also, I'm very shy about signaling across a dinner table or anywhere else, as you may remember. In 12 years, I haven't forgotten. Oh, has it been that long? I followed your career, and I can't tell you how pleased I am that you've made such a brilliant mark for yourself. Thank you. Do you... Do you only live for your painting, or, um... Am I married? Mm. No. I never did marry. Oh, well, you ought to, Oliver. It's the best thing. I like that. From you. Oh, well, why not from me? I'm very happy. That is just why I can't be. It's cruel of you to praise marriage. But I have had the pleasure of talking to your husband. You must know him better. He's really worthwhile. Oh, and I want you to meet my little girl. She's nine years old. She's too beautiful. Bring her to my studio in London. I should like to paint her. Oh, don't speak to me of that. It reminds me of something I'd rather forget. It's a confession I must make. You know that beautiful painting you gave me? I know. You parted with it. Oh, then you heard. I I was sure you would. But do you know what we got for it? Two hundred (laughs) pounds. You might have gotten much more. Well, it seemed a great deal at the time. It it was when we were first married. You see, we needed the money. Do you mean the two hundred is what you got for selling the vase? What vase? The beautiful Indian vase the Grand Duke gave you when you gave him the portrait. The Grand Duke? What's his name? Silberstadt. Your husband told me. Oh, my husband. Oh, yes, yes. Eve, you seem impressed by my renown. Would you have married me if you had known back then? I did know, Oliver. I always knew it. I didn't. (laughs) You were too modest. You didn't think so when I proposed to you. If I'd married you, I couldn't have married Clement, and he's so nice. Oh, darling, darling, we were just talking about you. Who are you? Well, how nice for you. You know, Oliver wants to paint Amy. Ah, she's a charming child, most interesting little creature. She does the most remarkable things. Well, don't go into it now, Clement. I- I'm tired. I think I'll go up to our room. Well, I'll, I'll come with you. And good night, Mr. Lyon. I trust we'll be seeing you tomorrow. I should be here at least ten days doing the preliminaries on Sir David's portrait. Ah, where have they put you up? Well, in the east wing at the end of the hall. The very last room? I believe so. Oh. Well, perhaps I'd better have a little talk with you about that. Uh, I'll go up and put Eve to bed, and I'll meet you in the library. Come along, dear. Have you said good night to Mr. Lyon? Yes, I have. Good night again. Good night, Eve. Now, what was that all about? I don't understand it at all. How could she marry him? Oh, he's a disinterested liar, really. He doesn't lie for gain or to injure anyone. (laughs) It's art for art's sake. You should see that. Clement has an inner vision of what might have been, what ought to be, and he helps it along. (laughs) That's all. You see, he paints with words. I object to the man because his ridiculous conversation takes up space. Oliver, you object to the man because you're jealous. Perhaps I am. He makes my blood boil. Eve is happy with him. Oh, I can't believe that. How can she stand him? I've never seen her object. She doesn't see. Someone has to show her. And you think you could? If I show him up for what he is, maybe I could bring her to her senses. And if you fail, I could always kill him, I suppose. Oliver, remember... You're in this house to paint my father's portrait, not for revenge or murder. Is Oliver Lyon capable of dealing out death? Or is this perhaps more dare than deed? However, recalling the wisdom of Oscar Wilde, who tells us, Each man kills the thing he loves. By each, let this be heard. Some do it with a flattering look. Some with a flattering word. Makes me wonder what Oliver has in mind. Let's see when I return shortly with Act Two. The 
famous portrait artist Oliver Lyon encounters a woman to whom he proposed marriage 12 years ago. She is married to an incredible character, one Colonel Cappadoce, a congenital liar. This torments Oliver, who feels the lady of his heart has been betrayed. As we continue, the Colonel and Oliver are seated in the library. You were telling me, Mr. Lyon, that they put you up in the east wing in the last room at the end of the hall? Yes, and I'm quite comfortable. Are you? I'm surprised. Uh, but you haven't spent a night there. Uh, no. Well, that's the ancient part of the house which Sir David started with 40 years ago. Is there something wrong with the room? Well, not if you don't mind ghosts. I don't. I've never stayed in a haunted house, and I've always wished to. Is there a ghost here? I wouldn't sleep in that end room. At least not until you finish your portrait of Sir David. Come now, you're joking. I'm not. They don't often put people to sleep in there, but when the house is crowded, I suppose they have to. I'll tell you this in confidence. Three days ago, a young fellow had been put up in that very room with the predictable consequence. At breakfast, he appeared with an awfully queer face. He'd got an urgent call to town, and he was very sorry his visit had to be cut short. Ashmore and his father looked at each other, and off the poor devil went. Really, now? I don't know whether to be apprehensive or optimistic. But I'll manage somehow. Do come in. Just want to see if you're well installed and comfortable? Couldn't be better. I'm looking forward to getting an early start doing the preliminary sketches of Sir David. Oh, father's looking forward to it very much. Oliver, I hope you sleep well. I hope so too, if I'm not visited by ghosts. Ghosts? If they must appear, I'm looking forward to meeting them. I might persuade one of them to pose for me. <laughs> Everyone who lives in these parts of England has got some favorite haunted room. I suppose that's what you mean. What well, doesn't bother me. Don't worry. Tomorrow morning I shan't be running back to London like your young man did three days ago. Three days ago? Who, who did you say? The one who got an urgent call at breakfast and took the 1020. Did he sleep in this room more than one night? Oliver, I don't know what you're talking about. There wasn't any young man sleeping here three days ago. Oh. oh, of course. Perhaps I've been misinformed. I would say you had. Why does he do it? Oh, he'll be on his way back to town Monday morning. I must put the colonel out of my mind and concentrate on what I've come here to do. And you'll find father an excellent subject. I'm sure I will. Good night, Arthur. <laughs> You don't mind if we chat while you're doing what you're doing with your pencil? No, no, not at all, Sir David. Now, you just hold that pose and leave the rest to me. <laughs> I don't mind sitting still in one place at all, you know. We, uh, missed you at dinner last night. I don't care for gatherings of more than two. Uh, who was at dinner last night? Uh, a couple. I can't remember their name. And a Colonel and Mrs. Cappadose. Cappadose. Here for the weekend, is he? Married a pretty woman. I knew his father. We went to Eton together. But the son, <laughs> that Colonel has only one attribute, so far as I can see. Has he? Yes. Married a pretty woman. That man has a monstrous foible. He has? Yes. He's a thumping liar. Really? I don't know how she puts up with it. Well, perhaps she doesn't notice it. Could be. The strange part is the fellow's not a scoundrel. There's no harm in him. He simply can't give you a straight answer. Now, my, my son tells me his friends understand and don't mention it for the sake of his wife. But I dare say she's used to it. How could she be? My dear sir... When a woman's in love... Oh, Sir David, if you please don't turn your head quite so much. Keep it to the left as you had it. I, uh, I knew the colonel's wife years ago. She wasn't one for clouding the truth then, not her. I like you very much. 
But I have seen her back him up. Are you sure? You're in love with her, aren't you, Oliver? Very likely. I used to be. You have to understand women. She can't expose him. You know, when I think of it, I get so very angry. Then don't think of it. And you can imagine Bates to see Eve, this girl, a woman now, but I always remembered her as a girl, to see her married to this braggart, this teller of tall tales. I gather this lady still means a great deal to you, sir. Yes, she does. Anyway, they left, and I stayed on and got Sir David's portrait underway. I have it done in a few days. Oh, he's a splendid old man. It was a pleasure to do him. So, here I am, back at home. And, uh... When are you going to begin a portrait of the lady? Oh, Bates, you are incorrigible. <laughs> no, I think not. I may drop in and see her from time to time, take her to tea. I don't really know how I stand with her. Uh, it depends how f- friendly she is. Hey, but <laughs> defensive about her husband. I'd be satisfied, believe me, if only by some sign she made me understand she wished her life had been shared with me. Uh, then why don't you paint his picture, sir? What? The colonel's? Uh, I've seen a great many of your portraits, Mr. Lyon, and in each, the underlying characteristic of the sitter were brought out as clearly as if they'd always been written on his face. If I could do that and make her see... Bates. Oh, Bates, you are a wicked man. (laughs) And I'm not much better. I shall suggest it to the lady the next time we meet. But why not, Eve? Oliver, you've painted enough portraits of this family as it is. Only of you. And that was before you were married. I don't know what Clement would say... But I do know he'd be embarrassed. Having you do a portrait would be a, a luxury we really couldn't afford. Well, why not let your husband sit for me for my pleasure? Let it be his favor to me. It'll do me a lot of good to paint him. And, well, I will keep the picture. Uh, how will it do you a lot of good? Oh, he's such a rare model. Such a... such an interesting subject. He has an expressive face. It will teach me no end of things. Uh, expressive of what? Why, of his nature. And do you want to paint his nature? Of course I do. That is what a great portrait gives you. And I shall make the colonel's a great one. His nature is very noble. Oh, trust me. I shall bring it out. Oh, Oliver, you could never persuade me to let you dig into my soul that way. Yes, they're very casual about those things, especially in India. The doctors would as soon declare you dead as look at you. Now, how could they do that? Well, it happened to a friend of mine. I give you my word, as surely as I sit here. I say my going on like this doesn't disturb your painting, does it? No, no, not at all. I was going to suggest we take a break and have a drink. Ah, capital idea. Uh, Ah, good to be on my feet. I've got, I'll help myself. Uh, this friend of mine is supposed to have died of jungle fever. And they clapped him into a coffin. Mm. Oh, thank you. You mean your friend was literally buried alive? Chopped into the ground. Oh, cheers. Mm, cheers. And he was left there? Until I came and hauled him out. Mm. Uh, and, uh, and how did that happen? Well, I dreamed about him. I heard him calling to me in the night from his grave. You know there are people in India who violate graves. So, yes, I rode straight out to the cemetery, and sure enough, a couple of them were at it. I gave them a shot from my rifle, and they ran for it. I pulled him out, the air brought him to, and he was none the worse. He called to you in the night? Well, that's the interesting point. What was it? It wasn't his ghost, because he wasn't dead. Hmm. Well, shall we go back to the canvas? Now, can you remember how you were sitting? Oh, I I never forget a thing. Uh, uh, 
I must say I'm enjoying posing for the portrait. <laughs> I really am. <laughs> now, here we are again. Have I been here ten times or twelve? <laughs> I told my wife we should move to St. John's Wood. I like the area here. Yes, you would. It's quiet. I can't stand noise, do you know? What I like about this studio, you can walk right out onto the garden. It's actually a kind of tradesman's entrance which some of my models know about. I don't get a bit tired posing for you. Or have I said that before? A few more settings ought to do it. Ah, Eve can't wait to see the portrait. Yes. I am most anxious for her to see it. Uh, uh, excuse me. I, I beg your pardon. Hello. I'm not needing any models today, thank you. Oh, uh, I hope you don't mind my coming straight into your studio. I do mind. I'm working. Well, it's the only way if you want a job as a model. Uh, you, you have to be forward, How you know? did you get into the garden? Well, the gate was open. Oh. You, you've used me before. I don't remember you. Oh, well, I, I just thought I would look in. Oh, thank you. Uh, if you need me, just send me a postcard. Miss Geraldine, Mortimer Terrace Muse, Nottingham. Oh, very good, I'll remember. I'm sure Miss Solan will keep you in mind. Oh, perhaps you send postcards, do you? Well, I'm off now. Bye, everyone. Oh, I must tell Bates to make sure the gate is always locked. Have you ever painted her? Never. Never saw her before. Huh. She was very pretty ten years ago. Mm, probably. But the least drop spoils them. She's not a model I could paint. My dear fellow, she's not a model. Well, maybe not today, but she was one. Never. All a pretext. She didn't want you, Lan. She wanted me. Well, maybe. But she did pay some attention to you. What does she want of you? Well, she hates me. What? Uh, she's been following me. I was annoyed when she came in, but not surprised. Oh, well, you concealed it very well. well. I've seen her hanging around. She was near my house this morning. She isn't a model, never was. A young friend of mine got involved with her, and I rescued him. Told her I'd report her to the police, and she's never forgiven me. I wouldn't be surprised to find her up the road when I, when I go home. Well... Shouldn't you have some protection? The best protection is five shillings. <laughs> that much I'll give her. I'll contribute another five. Well, well, you're not going now, are you, Colonel? I'd better. Might as well face up to her now. I'll have Bates show you out. No, you needn't bother. I know the way. You rang, Mr. Lahn? Oh, don't bother, please. I'll go out the way she did through the garden. I look forward to our next session, Lion. I'm sure my wife will also. She keeps asking me when the portrait is ready to see. Soon, I hope. Not quite finished yet. Bye. Bye. Oh, Bates, the man is quite impossible. You should have heard the story he made up about some poor girl who wandered in just now for a modeling job. Would you make sure the gate is locked and, and then come back? Yes. I want you to be the first to see what I have painted. I hope that I have done it right. At last, the unveiling. Oliver Lyon hopes he has done it right. Is he, like Hamlet, being cruel only to be kind? Or has he gone too far in the unmasking of the colonel? He is disquieted. Will Eve understand? We'll certainly know when you join me shortly as I return with Act Three. The portrait is complete. The artist about to show it to the one person he can trust, his secretary butler. It is not a likeness he has tried to paint, but an accusation. If indeed it exposes the colonel's false plumage, the next person who should see it is Eve, the colonel's wife. Stand over here, Bates, and you'll see him as I do. Yes, sir. There he is, Colonel Capadoz in all his mendacity. Oh, you've captured him to a T. Frankly, I couldn't help myself. 
Once he got up there on that chair and started spouting like a great whale, it came to me as though the great painter in the sky guided my brush. <laughs> Those eyes, the squinty look, the, the mouth flapping with overindulgence. <laughs> it is him. And now to show her. Yes. How am I going to do it? Uh, has she asked to see the portrait? Oh, practically every day. Now, um, uh, she will stand uh, here. I will stand in the corner and watch while she discovers this mountebank. Sees him as everyone else sees him. <laughs> you should be very proud, sir. Proud? To have captured him so well. Yeah. Bates, to tell you the truth, I feel a little... Ashamed. Oliver, old chap. It was a pleasure to see you. Arthur told me you might be up for a few days. Come, come have a round of croquet with me. I've never played it, Sir David. Oh, oh. I accept your apology. Come, sit then. Over here. Uh, we missed you out here. Why don't you come more often? Are you painting some dukes and duchesses these days? What are you up to? Oh, not that much. But I am gathering a few portraits I'm the most proud of to be hung at the Academy showing next month. I suppose mine are not good enough to join the Prime Ministers. And then there, uh, what's the name that actress George Shaw is so fond of? As a matter of fact, Sir David, I do want to include yours. Do you? Uh, I'm honored. By the way, you just missed your favorite couple. They stayed with us for a week and then went back to London. Colonel and Mrs. Cabadeau. Arthur warned me. I waited till they had left. You didn't wish to meet up with them again. Is that it? Not yet. Can't say I blame you. He's as puffed up as always. I still think it's a great tribute to Eve. She can be so attached to him. Hangs on to his every word. And there are a lot of those. That may change. You think so? However, you have got a devilish look about you. What do you know? Sir David, uh, do me a favor. We will not mention the colonel's name for the next three days of my visit. What do you offer me? As an inducement. I shall let you teach me croquet. <laughs> Yes? Uh, I'm Mrs. Capados. Is Mr. Lyon in? Oh, I'm afraid not, madam. Oh, dear. We were passing by, and my husband and I thought we'd drop in to see him. Mr. Lyon is away for a few days. I see. Oh, I am disappointed. Yes. Well, now, if you'll excuse me, madam, I, I was just going out to do a little marketing. You will tell Mr. Lyon we stopped by. Oh, I certainly will. <laughs> Portrait, darling. Oh, I know he has. He wanted to make a few changes, he said, before having it hung in the academy. <laughs> what do you think of that, eh? I'll be hung right next to the Prime Minister. You're making it all the more difficult for me to wait until Oliver gets back. Is it really that important to you, dear, to see my portrait today? Oh, of course it is. It's you, isn't it? And I'm interested in everything about you. Uh, Besides, Oliver is a very gifted painter. Probably a genius. Well, <clears throat> there is a way we can get in without anyone knowing. How? Oh. Through the garden at the back. If the gate is unlocked, we're as good as inside the studio now. See? What did I tell you? <laughs> it was easy to get in here. Oh, but where are you? Where's the portrait? He's got tons of canvases. Yes, uh, now let me... Uh, he always keeps it in this corner, mm. facing the wall. Ah, here it is. Oh. Uh, uh, it'll show off better if I put it on this easel. Uh, I say, he's done a magnificent job. Oh, no. It? Eve, what's the matter? Are you all right? I 
can't bear it. I can't bear it. What is it, darling? It's too cruel. If I wish it... It's all there. It's all there. Well, what's all there? Everything, everything he's seen. It's too awful. I can't look at it anymore. I can't. Everything he's seen? Well, he's made me rather handsome. What's no. wrong with that? Are you blind, Clement? Handsome. It's hideous. You are not that. You are not. What he's painted you. Not what, in heaven's name. What he's made of you, he knows. He he has seen. Now everyone will know, everyone will see. He's putting it in the academy. Oh, darling, if you hate it so, I, I won't let him take it to be exhibited no, there. You can't stop him. The painting is his. He'll send it. It'll kill me if people see it. It will kill me. I won't let anything happen to you. If there's something bad about that portrait... I shall do something about it. After all, it's my face. Ah, here among the paintbrushes, just what I need. A knife. Oh, Clement, Clement, we must go. I can't stay here. Darling, darling, wait in the garden for me. I'll be there in a moment. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. When I came back, sir, there was the painting slashed to shreds, the way you see it now. And you had let no one in? No. As I told you, the colonel and Mrs. Capito stopped by. I was on my way out. We exchanged a few words. They went one way and I went the other. I was thinking of calling the police when you arrived. Oh, just as well you didn't. And now, this door from the studio to the garden, was it locked? Well, I hadn't been in here to see, sir. Ah, I must have left it open. Uh, come along, Blakes. Let's take a look outside. There's your answer. The gate is open. Uh, someone gained entry, went into the studio, and destroyed your painting. It looks that way, doesn't it? But nothing is missing, sir. I checked that right away. Nothing is gone. Whoever came in didn't come to steal. I must say, sir, you're taking this very calmly. I, I I don't quite understand. How can you take such vandalism so quietly? You're going to hang it in the academy. Well, it served its purpose. We won't talk about it anymore, shall we? Mr. Lyon, Colonel and Mrs. Capitos to see you. Sir. Really? I do have them come in. Oliver? My dear Eve. My dear Lan. We were in the neighborhood and I said to Eve, uh, let's stop in at Oliver Lan's and make our confession. <laughs> in fact, we've been away and just got back and I said to Clement, the first thing we must do is go to see Oliver and congratulate him on that wonderful painting he did of you. Oh, you've seen it. We stopped by. Uh, you were in the country, and your man said so. Uh, he was going out marketing. We walked off, and then... Uh, let, let me tell it, Eve. After all, it was my idea. Uh, I remembered your garden gate, and so I let myself into your studio. Uh, I hope you'll forgive us, but I, I just had to see your magnificent portrait. Then you thought I really captured something. Oh, you captured everything. It's beautiful. I hadn't quite finished it, you know. Well, then, we shall just continue our sittings again, eh? We shall have to begin again. The painting has been smashed. Oliver, what did you do that for? I didn't. I found it that way with a dozen slashes right through it. I see. I hope that you didn't do it. Well, I have a very good idea who did. That woman. Remember me saying so, my dear? That woman? Well, don't you remember when we came out, she was quite near the garden gate. Remember I told you about her? Geraldine. The one who burst in that day, Lauren. That's it. We saw her hanging about, didn't we? Are you saying she came in and destroyed my painting? Oh, yes. Yes, I, I remember... Her. Well, how did she get in? Well, we left by the garden. Oh, no. I I couldn't have been so stupid as not to fasten the gate. Whoever slashed the painting had a very determined hand. But I don't understand her motive. 
<laughs> she's off her head, and she hates me. That's her motive. But she doesn't hate me. Eve, did you see this woman? Well, there was someone Clement called my attention to. I, I didn't look, really. We were going the other way. And you think she did it, hmm? How can I tell? If she did, she was mad, poor thing. Yes. And is there anyone else you might suspect? No, no, not a soul. Hmm, no, well, she could easily have stepped in. Yes, she could have done the job in three seconds. Except... The picture wasn't out. Oh, my dear fellow, now don't curse me. But of course, to show it to Eve, I dragged it out. You didn't put it back. Oh, Clement, didn't I tell you to? What can I say? Well, can nothing be done, Oliver? Uh, can't the picture be repaired? I don't know. I don't care. It's all over. But... You did like it, really, Eve. I loved it. I loved it. Oliver, what's this Arthur was telling me about your experience with the Colonel's portrait? Did you ever find out who damaged it? That was quite a mystery. Oh, no, no, not at all. I know who did it. Do you? It was a fitting end to my lack of judgment. But I suppose so long as man permits his imagination to rule his heart, he's in for it. Ah, it has to do with your affections for Mrs. Capados. <laughs> and uh, you think either she destroyed the portrait of the colonel, or he did? Both, I suspect. Because of how you painted him, and they didn't care for that. Sir David, you're a marvel. I thought I'd show him up to his wife, and she'd see him as I did. Don't ask me why I was so foolish, but I was. Oliver, how do you know they had a hand in it? Because they denied and lied. I suppose that was the hardest for me to understand. Why Eve stood by him. You have a lot to learn about women. Oh, she was... Fine once, not to be taken in by anyone, let alone a coarse and stupid liar. My boy, it doesn't matter. She loves him. Now, let's go inside and fetch my portrait for you. I have it all wrapped up and ready to be exhibited at the Academy. <laughs> It's a truism that, I suspect, dates back to the darker ages. In matters of love, we are all children. Although Oliver Lyon had the ability to translate a person's true character into pigment and brush strokes to hold the mirror up to nature, he was unable to clearly understand the contradictions and cross-purposes that make up a character. In time, he may. I shall return shortly with words that say it far better than I can. the painter could have learned something from da Vinci, the master, who wrote, Great love is born out of great knowledge of the object one loves. If you do not understand them, you can only admire them lamely. Love is the daughter of knowledge, and love is deep in the same degree as the knowledge is sure. Our cast included Norman Rose, Bernie Grant, Court Benson, and Carol Titel. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown.